Hello, everyone. Um, we are cooking, uh, talking about creating tool uh, for Blender outside of Blender. That's a really strange title for a conference. Uh, the topic of this conference is uh, to create external interface outside of Blender using, for instance, uh, a web browser of a standalone application and to remote uh, Blender by using it. So first of all, we're going to uh, really quickly introduce ourselves. Yeah, I'm Flavio Perez. I'm from France. I used to have an artist background before doing a school name, Art Technologies of Images, where I learned to script. I didn't consider myself as a programmer. Uh, I work at the Tour de Minuit, at MacGuff, on these big features you may have heard of. And then I, I went to the south of France, uh, a little company called Ineffecto, and today I'm starting another called L'Effet Special. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm Francois Grassard, I'm also French, as you can hear. Uh, I also come from Art and Technology of Image uh, at the Paris 8 University. I'm an independent uh, 3D, 3D and VFX artist. Uh, we're using Blender, but not only, but mainly Blender now. And uh, I'm also a developer, and I code the standalone application, and mostly web application now. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a company named Automate to integrate HTML5 panel inside After Effects and uh, Adobe application. That was the initial uh, um, uh, project when I started to, uh, uh, to work on this stuff. I'm an active member of the demo scene when we create uh, a lot of real-time graphics. And I'm trying to use a web browser as a render engine, uh, mainly for a broadcast purpose. And uh, aside that, I'm a member of the core team of Natron, who is an uh, open source compositing uh, uh, software, and I try to make it communicate with Blender uh, using uh, exactly the same kind of sockets. And we are also uh, teachers at the Paris 8 University when we try to uh, uh, teach open source software to our students, and they really, really love Blender. They choose Blender, in fact. Uh, when you ask them if, if they want to work with Maya or Blender, at 90% they reply, they work to Blender. So it's come from the student, not from the teacher. It, that's a really interesting point of view. Uh, we also want to thank Jonathan Giroux, who work on the initial connection for sending camera information from Blender to a WebGL renderer inside the browser. And uh, after that, we uh, work on uh, the communication on the other side uh, from the web browser to Blender. And it is also as a creator of uh, the registry add-on, who is a kind of uh, repository of add-on who can be easily installed inside Blender. I would like to quickly thank you. The, thanks the Blender Summer Camp, which is something we organized since three years with students going uh, doing an internship. We started at In Effect on this year, which was at L'Effet Special last year. We work on the uh, Vlad et Louise you might see tonight. And for the post library, I'm going to present today uh, Noeli here in the middle and, uh, and uh, Damien, which is the guy without clothes. Uh, the naked guy. <laughs> helped me a lot <laughs> on this, so I would like to thank them. Almost naked. Uh, so, first of all, why creating a tool outside of Blender? We really, really love uh, the Blender interface, uh, even the 2.4 branch, in my opinion. Uh, but first of all, we don't want to disturb the developer with a sometimes strange, strange idea. Uh, we don't want to add new buttons. <laughs> we don't want to add new shortcuts. And uh, we sometimes want to create complex widgets, uh, while sometimes difficult to design uh, using the Blender user interface. We want to have uh, direct access to a lot of libraries who are already made uh, in several languages. And you want to connect Blender to external tool and make them communicate. So we're going to show you that uh, with uh, two different demos. So how does it work? Uh, we decided, I, mean, I tried last year to, to put a web server inside Blender and work uh, within outside. And it didn't work really well. Uh, just like uh, running uh, Qt inside Blender, the loop is not working well. So uh, actually, we find a way putting that web server in another thread. But I'm going to go back to that in a little in a second. Um, and the idea was still to have something which was non-blocking, of course, as Blender should always be, and it's great. Um, so the idea is now you have this web server, and you can send stuff to that using the WebSocket. We'll see that. Uh, of course, you, the first version, you can send any Python uh, command. So you can, you can even make jokes to your yes. former uh, team workers in the, in the same network, for example. 
Well, that's a security issue we have already managed. So far, you can only use the local host connection and stuff like that, but and only call for operators and not any Python command. Um, um, but that's it. I will just go to a schema explaining how it's working. So Blender started this double web socket for Python little web server. It's very, very light on a separated thread. So it's not uh, uh, blocking Blender in any, in any case. And then the, 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 the way it's communicating with Blender is we have this queue list. And in this queue list, we'll see we can put a message and then Blender can, can get it uh, using a, uh, a permanent script asking for the queue list if there is something waiting. So for example, in the case of the, of the, of the post library, we'll show as a demo, uh, we just connect that post library to the little server. It's the next slide. Uh, here we can already check if the connection is uh, allowed and, or we just close it, of course. And then the post library will just send a message to the web server, which put that message on the next slide. And the server could be on the localhost. You don't have to, to have two computers. Yeah, you know, and the demo it will be on the Only same. on these computers, for instance. Yeah. So that message goes to the pile of the, the queue, and Blender take it every one sixth of a second. Every time Blender is refreshed, it checked if there is something new in that pile. It's very, it's very quick. And now Blender got the message and do whatever needs to be done. Uh, the way we found to, to answer back, because Blender could use the request library from Python, for example, to, to call back the, to send a message back to the server, but it's much not very uh, handy. So we have found a way to do a, a callback within the, within the, uh, the, server. the operators yeah. inside Blender, going through the same uh, WebSocket connection so the, the, the application can wait for an answer back from where the, message, the, the first message has been sent. The goal was to create a bi-directional communication process between a web browser and Blender and Blender and the web browser. So uh, what language or framework can uh, we use to develop interface or widgets? Uh, any kind of frameworks who can manage WebSocket connection. Uh, of course, web browser uh, natively can handle WebSocket connection, but if you prefer to create a standalone application using C or C++ or uh, making uh, an interface using Qt or WX widget, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, can, you can use it that way. Um, but uh, in this case, we... Uh, we try to mostly use the web browser because web browser is incredibly powerful now to create interface. Uh, we can really, really quickly uh, create new prototype of controllers. The one I'm going to show you uh, took me about 10 hours to code uh, to create a light widget. And uh, browser can easily communicate with the rest of the world through a bunch of API. Natively, it can uh, check a database, it can make uh, XML request or Ajax request, take a JSON, and it can use uh, WebGL and CSS. I don't know if you already know this website named Shader Toy, where inside the browser you can create really high-end graphics. And uh, it shows a powerful of the WebGL renderer, and we can use it to create really, really complex widget. So, uh, the best part is also you, we can, uh, we don't love installation process, <laughs> as Tom said before. And uh, the best part is you just have to put the widget on the server. You don't have to copy, it's automatically deploy or, 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 or the computer in the, in the network. And we can uh, use also a lot of library uh, to do a lot of things, facial recognition, I, I'm currently working on that, uh, to, to speed up the animation process of the, of the characters. And we already have a lot of things uh, who exist in JavaScript. Um, yeah, what can we do with that? We can do a lot of things, actually. We, we have two examples today. Um, as, as we, we work with a WebSocket, it can work on your computer. That's the, the easiest part, but it can work also through the network. For example, the, the post library I'm going to show can be on the dedicated server, so everyone on the team access the same poses all the time, and it's updated. It's just one server, so it's working very well through the, net, through the network. I mean, at least on the no local network, then if you want to work through internet, you will have to handle the ports and, and stuff like that. But that's, uh, that's something else. Uh, 
uh, we can so in working like that we can easily put anything in a tablet as uh, if we do a, a an interface in the web page, you can open it in a tablet and it's connecting to, connected to Blender through the WebSocket on your network so you can send stuff from the tablet to, to Blender easily. Um, so database is for example and the light widget will be the second example so we might just go to the demo part I guess and uh, and then as uh, as it's WebSockets you can connect two or three users at the same time on the same Blender if there is any application uh, worth it of course. Uh, that's more of your part. But yes. So it's time for demo. We are gonna start with uh, the pause library. It's uh, nearly similar to the one uh, Ton uh, said previously. Yeah, it's working. Um, so how it's working? Um, we have already started the server in Blender, so this, the, yeah, there is one button. Yeah, it started. So I, I would go to check and reload this page. And I see here, this is Firefox, okay? Uh, it says it's connected to Victor Colibri .blend, so it's that file. So I know I'm connected to the, that file. Uh, that pose library, it's, a, you, it's basically uh, a nav bar with you where you can put different folders to save your poses. Uh, pose uh, thumbnail, and then properties when you click on a, a, a pose, you can, you can see the pose, the name, and, and then more options here. Uh, if needed, you can zoom the poses and stuff like that. So if you have a little screen, you can also uh, hide the, the different panels with the same shortcut as Blender. And, uh, and you can just create a, a very, damn it, yeah. a very small window here if you have only one screen, of course. All right. So it's kind of very easy. When you, you want, you just double click on the, on the pose and it applies it on Blender straight away. So you see, it's kind of, the idea is was to, to, to be very fast. So what's happening when I double click, it's taking all the poses matrix saved uh, as a JSON file in the SQLite library and then sending it back to Blender, it's almost real time. So you can uh, do that, you know, oh, I will go back to that one later. Uh, uh, you can, you can apply them. Uh, one of the funny things we thought about was uh, if you want to mix uh, different poses, you can just middle click and then you just, you just mix the poses. So it can be useful also because when you select bones here, you want to say, I want, uh, uh, sorry, um, I want to apply the pose to only the selection here, for example, only the eyes and not the mouse. Now, if I do that, it's applying the pose only to what is selected. So it can be very useful for animators as if I go back here and I take this pose, for example, I say, okay, I like the, the, I like the legs here, but I don't want the upper part, so I can just select it and I can mix it with something else and the legs are not moving. So you can, you can mix them very easily and, and, and the mixing is working. Um, then we have more features like uh, the hands and the hands. If, if you have uh, saved hands, for example, this pose here, but you don't want to save the pose for uh, the left hand and then for the right hand, you can just apply it mirror, mirrored here and it will apply the pose to the other side. This is using the, the mirror features of Blender, which is very handy and, and easy to use. Um, and then, yeah, of this, the first phase here, if I apply it, no, if I apply it, it's applying something to the old body because if I click here and say select affected bones, I see I have saved all the bones. So now I just want to re-update re this, this pose with the current phase but not the rest of the bones. So I will just go select the face, his bones and update pose here. Now, now the pose has been updated on the database on one click and, and I can reuse it and it's not bugging anymore. So uh, that's it for the pose library. So the first one is um, more a technical demo, not, for, not a 
practical demos. Uh, it's a kind of toy. Uh, in this case, uh, I simply launch a cycle on the left part of the screen. And here I have uh, Firefox, once again. And I have a widget for lightning. If I click the plus button, uh, I place a new light inside Blender here, but I can also move it using a WebGL controller. And I can easily and quickly place new light to light my, my characters. Um, I can uh, reduce the intensity, uh, push the light away, modif modify the distance, and also modify the color. So that's just some example of what we can do, but we can, of course, create a lot of controllers. And uh, here we can simply place new light all around. Okay, with a light selection, uh, a minus button to delete light. And uh, the most important thing about that is, is not blocking Blender, and you can connect uh, to the same Blender with different uh, widgets. If you want to light, for instance, a free character in the same scene, uh, you can uh, launch a, a cycle rendering, and uh, maybe by a process, what we don't know exactly what uh, process to use for that, but you can uh, stream the cycles rendering uh, over the, the, the network, and uh, each, uh, each uh, lighter can see the result of uh, the placement of uh, each light here. So they can work at the same time on the same scene to light each character. Uh, quickly on, on feature uh, ideas, uh, this is like a very, very simplified rig for, uh, for kids, for example, less than six years old. It's very easy for them to, to, to have a tablet and, and move uh, something. This is another example. And uh, so you can just drag, for example, the leg and the tablet, and it's very easy. It's auto automatically selecting the, the, right, uh, uh, the right bone on controlling Blender in real time. And this is another idea of a rig picker for animators. Uh, we, we don't really see on the screen here, but when you, you have the controllers, you can select them, and, and then you have the selection on real time in Blender, so you can work, and then have the tablet and, 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 and click it, and you don't have these very little rig, con, rig uh, pickers you can have sometimes in the toolbar. Uh, and for example, here it's a puppet, so when you select the hand, uh, you have all the, the other available hands, which are just displayed, and you can switch to them. So we can, we can think about a lot of, of fun features going out of Blender and, and using the, the most of what we can, we can have. Like most of us already have a tablet today and, and, the, and, the, and the browser inside the tablet handles a lot of stuff and we can use that, so why not? And we want to uh, extend the controller outside of the main monitor to have uh, some remote. Uh, so what about the future? We don't know. Uh, we have to talk about that with you. Uh, do you think it's a good idea or do you, want, do, do you think it's not? Yeah, thank you. Um, in this case of uh, the lightning widgets, uh, the idea was to stream a cycle across the network using, for instance, FFmpeg and to uh, send the rendering inside the web page just next to the controller. So uh, just by using a tablet, uh, a, a graphist, uh, an artist can, uh, can light his character across the network. And uh, obviously we want to generalize this concept to create specific tool for each part of the projection, for the animation, for the lighting. So uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to talk with us about the concept. It, <laughs> what, what we can do with that, we're not dangerous, we just have a really strange French accent. Thank you very much. Any question? Thank you. have two questions on Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have two minutes more, so. One question, maybe? No? No. Yeah. Uh, hi, I've, I've been uh, thinking about also, also these uh, kind of tools uh, for the past few years. And uh, have you also thought about low latency uh, com communications between Blender and, and, uh, and web servers, web pages? Because FFmpeg is not 
in my opinion, not that uh, low latency at this moment. Uh, in some uh, H.264 encoding profile and um, in, in also some OGG profile, we can have really low latency uh, to uh, have less than one second of uh, latency between the sending of the information and the display of the information inside the web browser. Uh, you can use really specific, we, we can talk about that if you want, uh, you can use really specific profile to, to have a really, really low latency. And obviously, if you are on the same computer, because you are in the local host, but uh, also if you are in the local network, it also works, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. running upstairs and I'm going to check it. Hello. <laughs> okay, so I.